Well, thank you for the introduction, and hello, everyone. My talk today is about how animals are represented in advertising, um, specifically in car-related advertising. As this conference demonstrates, animals are deeply ingrained in our human lives and our culture, not just in cave painting, early art, and language, but also in popular media. Before I go into my research, I want to set the scene a little and I've put up a few references here from past research that's looked at how animals are portrayed in popular culture, specifically the tabloid press, TV, and print adverts. To summarize, these studies came up with a number of themes regarding the roles in which animals were used, as shown here. These are worth thinking about, as we'll see them crop up in the ads we look at later. As well as these themes, previous studies also noticed some other factors which are relevant to how animals are represented, and I'm going to quickly run through these. The first of these was how the animals portrayed, which not surprisingly can have a huge effect on context and how we perceive an animal. Dogs are a good example here, since they can be portrayed both as faithful friend and aggressive guard dog with very different reactions. Another factor that emerged was whether any moral or social judgments were attached to the animal or its behavior, casting it as good or bad in human terms. A third factor was whether the animal was categorized in its depiction. For example, was it portrayed as a pest animal, a pet, or an animal for our use? Another emerging theme was whether certain product categories, here cereals, use the same types of animal repeatedly. Whether the animal was portrayed in an anthropomorphic way or not was also noted as relevant, as well as how much the animal appeared to act in a transformative way for the product or vice versa. For example, here, where a product can transform our attitude to an animal, the tiger, from one normally a thought of as dangerous and wild into a friendly, jolly character. This brings me on to the last factor, meaning feedback. In other words, how much popular media might substantially change our understanding of an animal in the real world. For example, whales and dolphins weren't always generally popular. When the media began portraying them sympathetically in TV programs like Flipper, all that changed, and that translated into a real-world fundraising success story. Naming animals is very effective in this regard, as Penny's work showed us. However, it mustn't be forgotten that this can work both ways. Attitudes to chimps in the wild have been shown to be negatively impacted by popular media portrayals. Okay, so moving on to my study, with all of this in mind, I decided to carry out a review of animals in print advertising over the last decade, looking at a single product category, car advertising. I reviewed over 500 print ads in which animals portrayed a significant role, finding them through a variety of search engines and including anything from across the world that I could translate with Google Translate. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to see, and it's quite strong actually, it's quite good, you'd be impressed, even Chinese. I wanted to see if the same themes showed up and get a sense if anything had changed over the last 10 years. And for the rest of this presentation, I'm going to flip through some examples of the advertisements. I've grouped them into three main categories for this presentation, and we're going to start with the largest, animals as symbols. I've split symbols up into subcategories, and the first one I'm going to look at is one of the oldest and most classic associations between cars and animals, that of power and speed. So this Pontiac ad from 1965 shows big cats have been used in this context for quite some time. Focusing specifically on speed, we can see that sometimes the animal is used as a symbolic threat, chasing or aggressing, as in this Harley Davidson ad. But more often, it's the car or its engine that's represented by the animal, ready to accelerate at speed. Here, with a crouching tiger, the hope is clearly that some transformative aspect will assist with the car's image. Big cats were frequently used, although interestingly, these two were the only adverts I found in all of the Jaguar car ads that had any reference to an actual cat in them. Generally, though, even the hint of a big cat, especially a cheetah, is enough to suggest that the car is a sports model. <laughs> Referencing to rivalry, rivalry with other cars through animal symbolism was also common in the car adverts. This can be seen with chase and cat and mouse games. Although sometimes the cat, as car, has nothing to prove. 
Animals aren't always the product in this category. Sometimes they're shared as the outclass rival, defeated by a car that's even faster than them, or being given a ride. Other animals, as passengers of fast cars, also occasionally feature, and their reaction to the car's acceleration is fuel for humour. <laughs> Speed isn't everything, however. Sometimes power is needed. As much as big cats are associated with speed and power, bulls are one of the animals most associated with pure raw power in motorbikes and in cars. Though interestingly, the use of bulls seems to have dropped off over the last five years, perhaps because the power they reference is untempered. Horses and stallions are also associated symbolically with car engine power, but here it's harnessing the horse's power with control that has obvious appeal. Note how we're seeing symbolic themes of animals as tool use here as well in these horse adverts. The next symbolic category is big and tough. Now here it's hard to beat elephants and hippos as cargo that demonstrate a vehicle's carrying capacity. Note how some of these animals have them been transformed into human or pet substitutes. Gorillas also have a bit part to play here as tough, and the nod is also made to the rhino. When we're talking about enough space for the family, though, elephants seem to be the clear animal winners. Maybe it's the Dumbo appeal transferring family meaning to an elephant here. However, there is still space for a few recent quirky contenders in the family car carrying capacity. Staying with penguins, in the next category I looked at was the use of animals in car safety features. Animals play a variety of roles here. Sometimes their strengths in this area are used in a symbolic way to suggest safety with an improvement on top, reinforcing how you can never be too safe the little tortoises climbing into the car there. Unless, of course, you're that tough old rhino. Sometimes, however, animals are the failed attackers, demonstrating the strength and safety of the car, seen here in two copycat ads. And one in which the anthropomorphic gorilla figure, King Kong, finds a VW Polo surprisingly tough. Of all animals, though, sharks were a clear favourite for the threatening safety role and were frequently cast as the bad guys in car adverts. Birds also features as an aggressor, though more in the pest nuisance department, as can be seen in these ads for car cleaning products and status. Bears also feature as attackers from which we require protection in various forms. Some humorously anthropomorphic. However, there can be surprises. Sometimes bears are cast as potential victims that need protection. More often, though, it's other animals that are portrayed as our potential victims. Farm animals feature often here, sheep and cows. Squirrels also make a humorous and very noticeable appearance in this category. However, the all-round favourite victims are deer, often used in car headlight adverts. Finally, as we see here in the car safety category, animals can be both victim and attacker at the same time. <coughs> Sometimes you don't want to be safe. You want to live life on the wild side. In terms of 4x4 auto ads, elephants were often a favourite animal. However, two other themes emerged. The first was an aggressive colonial theme seen in these top of the food chain ads in which humans dominate all other forms of life actively explore new places and discover new species. Not surprisingly, few domestic animals fit in this theme of 4x4 ads, as this advert demonstrates. The second theme in 4x4 ads was the classic one of fitting in with the environment and nature, and being accepted as part of wild scenery as depicted by hippos and elephants is obviously good enough to repeat. More recently, this harmonious line has been extended to the cars being coveted or desired by wild animals who seem happy to offer assistance where possible. 
Reconnecting with nature as a theme continued in the next category of cars to come on the market, urban crossovers. Here we can see two themes which are reflected in contrasting animal use. The first is getting out of the city without having to lose city features to a place where nature is harmless, vulnerable perhaps, or just plain friendly. However, the second theme, the urban jungle, is the turnaround contrast. Now animals are portrayed as threatening, invading our world, and note the monochrome gray urban color schemes in this set. There's also a sense of urban fighting back, even animals leaving the city with urban ideas. So, looking towards the future, did I see changes in the use of animals in car advertising? Well, a few bionic animals rear their heads. But if there's been a big change in the use of animals in car ads, it's one of increase in complexity. Today's consumers expect more than one main feature, and the challenge for car advertisers seems to be how to translate this symbolically to animals. VW make a play for sophistication and performance in one with a sure-footed 4x4 goat shaved like a standard poodle. However, trying to get too much glamour into a 4x4 can be problematic, as this ad shows. In an attempt to appeal to complex purchaser needs, animals in this category were portrayed with a lot of humour. Elephants with power and speed. Or power and agility. Both a complete transformation of how we normally think about elephants. But, of course, the best way to show a dual concept of horse and elephant is a literal combination. And other animal combinations, safety with beauty, and speed with fuel efficiency. And this picks up on a popular combination. And it's interesting to see the rise of camels in auto ads, care of recent concerns for fuel economy. Other animal combinations are also used to drive home the idea you can have performance without a huge appetite for gas. Finally, the last category I'm going to look at is environmental. With its obvious connection to nature, I wanted to see how animals were being used in eco-friendly cars. Fish were not surprisingly popular. Adverts that talk to endangered nature have been around for quite some time, but we haven't always been so focused on altruism as these few early ads show. There's no strong sense of valuing nature in the animals chosen, nor in the way they're portrayed. And even this Land Rover advert leaves something to be desired in this area. A recently discovered animal is described for Land Rover owners as tasting like chicken. However, as increasing interest is being shown in smaller cars with less consumption, it definitely has a knock-on effect on animals used. As we see camels on the rise, so to a fish and frogs, common as symbols of environmental concern, with the occasional other animal also used to discuss fuel efficiency and reducing carbon footprints. These ads by the Green Cherry are a reworked version of the top of the food chain pictures I showed you earlier, showing now a more efficient consumption pattern. There's one animal to pick up on here. Pandas, as animal symbols, seem especially irresistible when we're talking about vulnerable nature. And time and again, they were cast as victims in need of our help. I really like this one. The final few slides in this section talk about what animals will have to put up with if we don't concern ourselves with eco-car choices. And it's a mixed bag of animals in use here, some fairly dark. However, amphibians continue to feature and, as the frog says, we still have the chance to make nature smile again. So what's to be learned from all this? Well, we've seen by example how the use of animals in car advertising follows many of the trends already identified for animals in other popular media, with symbolism used extensively in the areas of power, speed, vulnerability, and threat. Other factors noticed before as value judgments, transformation, and meaning changes can also be seen in car advertising. However, there does seem to be less anthropomorphism in car ads, with manufacturers often wishing to clearly align their products with animal features rather than human ones. Where anthropomorphism is used in car ads, it's almost always shown in a humorous context. 
In terms of my second question, have there been any changes over the last 10 years? Well, undoubtedly, as audiences and consumers have grown in sophistication, so too has the animal use in car ads become more complex. And I think that looks set to continue. The improvements in computer graphics have also opened doors in terms of getting increasingly creative with how, car, um, how animals are portrayed. And finally, as our interests in car features have shifted, so too have our animal preferences shifted into animals that can better represent these new concepts. And it will be interesting to see where this goes with traditional car fuel systems under even more pressure. I'm going to end with the last two slides I picked out as favourites. This first pair are from an advert that I think in many ways sums up the complexity of our feelings about animals and how we portray them. These ads show wild animals that we've taken and humanised, made into cuddly toy versions, and then dissembled again to reveal the wild beast within. And the final advert I leave you with is one <laughs> that uses two animals in such a bizarre setup that I'm keen to hear any ideas about what the manufacturers of a family people carrier really thought they were doing. Thank you.